Hey everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my wine channel. And as promised, I'm doing a little tour of my wine cellar. It's kind of been noisy because it's got my fan going on from my fridge. Um, but we'll do a quick tour and then we're going to uh, then um, I'm going to, to talk about things about wine cellar management and things like that and my philosophy. Okay, so here's my wine cellar. Again, it's a very, um, it's not, it's meant to be a working cellar, so it's not going to be impressive. So I've got lots of junk here. I've got, um, of course, decanters, lots of decanters. Um, and I've got some of my, um, you know, things, lots of decanters, lots of books, lots of wine spec magazines. Um, that's mostly in the you know before when we used to ha not have to um yeah you know we we didn't have the internet we needed all these magazines now it's more for show and a lot of this stuff is really just for show right now some of the bottles i've drank before the corvins um wine glasses things like that and then this is kind of the big thing of my um and just some boxes this is the big thing of my this is my wine fridge so it holds up to 500 bottles and I don't show people uh, what's inside and I'll talk why I do that but very uh, simple room um, and uh, that seems to hold me well you're probably very underwhelmed by my cellar I'm sorry if you disappointed people but I'm gonna kind of talk about my philosophy about wine collecting and again, I'm not making any judgments on anyone, but this is just my philosophy and how I do things. Um, so from my perspective, a wine cellar or what, whatever you keep at home, whatever you want to call it, a wine room, is really to store wine. Um, I don't really show it to people. It's, it's, you know, it's okay, but it's not there to impress people. And it's funny because my name is the Trophy Wine Hunter. And I chose that name kind of... Um, uh, carefully I didn't want to call myself the trophy wine collector because that implies that I just collect wines and I don't drink them which I don't think is the right philosophy and I didn't want to call myself the trophy wine drinker because I think that's again quite pretentious to just say I just drink trophy wines so I am the trophy wine hunter and I guess well, if you hunt anything if you hunt it the assumption is that you'll eventually eat it drink it whatever and that's kind of how I feel about uh, my cellar downstairs that uh, everything in there I do plan to drink and uh, fairly short term in about five years um, of course there's some exceptions but that's kind of how I view things I do have off-site facilities to store um, kind of things that are more long term and why I do that is two reasons one uh, I don't trust myself, so I don't really want to have it around. And two, um, this whole philosophy of, well, wines really don't need to be disturbed. And I don't feel it's the right thing to do to kind of just um, show wines as a art piece. Um, when you have wines, you should drink them. And that's why I don't go into my cellar and I show you what I have in there. Because... That doesn't help anyone. What does that do to for anyone? That shows you I have great wines. What does that do for you? Nothing. And so I really don't like that approach. Um, every wine that I show you from my cellar, every wine that um, I say that, um, you know, in the voting, when we do voting, uh, I have the full intention of drinking. And so um, that's kind of how I feel about a working wine cellar. Again, I'm going to give you a lot of my philosophy. You might agree or disagree and that will um i will go through this in the other videos too uh, it really is a philosophy towards wine drinking and the whole uh premise of it is to make sure that we are not being pretentious and to make sure that wine is accessible wine was always meant for the masses it was never meant to be a pretentious thing it was never meant to be for just a certain class of people that's not right thing to do and so I've always tried to take that approach and if I ever sound pretentious in my videos call me out because I don't uh, I don't intend to but maybe I am being pretentious so um, the whole point is I never think uh, I am better more knowledgeable because I drink expensive wines I'm more fortunate than a lot of people yes I have a lot of 
Uh, I'm really blessed that I've got a lot of resources and a lot of friends to share with me. Yes. But that doesn't make me a better person. That doesn't make me better in any way than any one person. I don't think it makes me a better drinker. Nothing. Um, you can't imply any of that thing by the size of someone's cellar. And so one thing I want to talk about is how people, when they're working on cellars, um, you know, my philosophy about how much wine you should have in your cellar. To me, uh, the amount, so when you're starting off, uh, of course, you know, you don't really have that much, um, you just have a couple of bottles, that's fine. You don't really need a cellar or a wine room. Once you get a bit more serious, um, and I think once you get to about 40 bottles and above, you should really have something like a wine fridge, wine storage facilities, and things like that. Um, again, this is my personal feeling. If you are going to get serious in wines, please have it in a temperature controlled setting like a wine fridge. Uh, mine is a big, pretty big one or a wine room that's temperature controlled. And people always say, well, you know, my basement is um, uh, enough and whatever, I've got this wine room. If you're gonna spend that much money on wine, please also spend it on the facility because that's really important, right? Uh, two things are very important when you store wine. There are three things. Uh, it shouldn't be, uh, it should be dark, it shouldn't really be light the temperature and the humidity. And, um, you know, showing off your wines and moving them out and showing them people, that doesn't help the wine. Uh, that helps your ego, but that doesn't help the wine. Um, and so people, I, I kind of, you know, if you're going to spend that much money and that much time in wine and you don't have the proper facilities, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And people always say, well, I have a perfect facility. Uh, unless you have like a... Um, calcium cave in your basement it's not a perfect facility okay that, that you know that's that doesn't happen you don't have underground storage dude. so that's not gonna it's not gonna happen and i just feel that um if you're gonna get serious in wines you should store them correctly and i'm just sipping here at 2018 um uh the joseph phelps cabernet sauvignon which i will be um reviewing shortly Sorry, I'm not reviewing. I'm just taking a taste of wine because I'm thirsty. Um, okay, so back to my point about how many bottles you need in your cellar. This is my personal belief. With your working store, I'm not talking about off-site, but with your working cellar, what you have at home, my understanding or my kind of belief is that you, it should be about the number of bottles that you drink a year. Okay, so I have my storage ha can fill up to 500. I have somewhere between 150 and 300 bottles in there at any given time. That's what I go through a year. I go through about 150 to 250 bottles a year. Okay, that's and that's drinking, gifting people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you don't need any more than that. And so everything above that, I'm sorry, this is my opinion. Quite frankly, is for ego. Um, you don't need. No one needs. Uh, more wine than they drink in a year unless you're expecting some football team to come over to your house and drink up 500 bottles um, and the problem being is that as collectors you if you don't like for instance if you have a seller of 500 bottles and you only drink 15 bottles a year that you're going to buy more bottles and your seller is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and then you become a wine collector that means there's no possible way that you're gonna be able to consume the wine. And that gets, and don't get me wrong, that's if you're gonna, if you're, some people, um, you know, sell wines and make tons of money in wine, that's different. I'm talking about from a consumer level. Um, at that pace, you will then be basically just become a wine collector instead of a wine consu consumer. And so this is what I find with lots of people. They get into this um, kind of uh, dilemma. They keep on wanting to buy wine, but they don't even drink wine. They don't drink enough wine. And so they keep on netting out uh, every year, year after year, too much wine. And they just, you know, you, you have, then you have to have a huge management system. Then, you know, you, you, you just get that growth and it just keeps on growing, 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 and escalating. And you actually never drink the wine. And I see this all the time. People have huge cellars, and then they don't have an end game. So they're not going to drink it all. So I guess they're going to sell it. But um, you know, we can talk in pre, um, future videos about the 
issues with selling wine. It's not that easy. There's commissions, there's storage costs, and some wine is not worth anything, quite frankly. Um, or they pass away and give it to their um, children. But you have to assume the children have the same love of wine. And you also have to assume they're not going to buy any more wine or else they're going to have the same problem. And it's eventually going to just get sold or given away. And so all that hard work that you've done uh, over the years to build up your cellar, someone's going to waste it, quite frankly. I know people have management systems, whatever. Look at um, what they call the average pi price per bottle in your cellar, the APPB. So to me and my right now, my average price per bottle is a little bit higher than what it, I would like. And it's very easy. You just take the retail cost of all the bottles that you have divided by number of costs and then you have your average price per bottle. And so that right now, my seller is closer to about $200 a bottle. Um, that's a little high for me. Um, so I like my, my, and everyone has their own range. So as a beginner, maybe your, your um, ideal price per bottle uh, is about 40 to $60. Mine is about 100 30 to 150 dollars that's where i would like my bottle the average bottle of wine that i have in my cellar so if i'm at 200 that means i have too much expensive wines that's what i should be drinking likewise if my price per bottle is 80 dollars a bottle then i know i have too much um uh, inexpensive wine so i can drink that and that gives you a good gauge of what you should be drinking or what you should buying or what how you can do that i look at that the other thing is important with Again, this is my philosophy. Your average price per bottle, when you have someone over for dinner, you should probably drink something above that average price per bottle. So, and, and that is a sign of respect from my perspective. So let's, and let's say I go over to someone's house and they have a thousand bottles in their cellar, right? And they tell me they've got Lafitte, Latour, whatever. And um, then they pull out, you know, Penfold's, 28 okay bin 28 i guess i should be appreciative i, I should be appreciative uh, because any bottle of wine that someone serves you you should be appreciative of. but at the same time that says a lot about what they think about me and what they think about um their drinking friends that that's that's a statement about them not about me uh in my in my opinion because Let's say your average price of bottle is $100 per bottle and you choose to serve someone that comes over to your house of $40 a bottle. What does that say about that person? That says that person, essentially, you're not good enough. You don't know either. You don't know enough about wine that you could tell. Or secondly, you're not really good enough to even drink an average bottle in my cellar. And that bothers me. Um, so when I have people in my house, I try to make sure that I serve above that average pr price per bottle so that that means i'm respecting them and and that that i mean i don't tell people my average price per bottle normally now everyone in the world knows but um that it's kind of an internal thing but i know myself if i should be good enough to do that and, and i really encourage people that have large sellers to do that share your wine um wine is meant for sharing it's not um uh, and you know, that that to me bothers me a lot when I hear people with large sellers and then, and I, I hear this quite a bit, you know, people kind of talking about their large sellers, what I have in the cellar. And then let's have dinner and they bring out a, uh, oh, I just bought this at liquor store. It's like, again, you, I should be appreciative. Um, anytime someone shares a wine, I should not, uh, I guess, be judgmental, but I guess I am being. Um, but I just don't think that's the right thing to do, especially if you are a um, wine collector, wine connoisseur, wine enthusiast, whatever you want to call yourself, and you have the knowledge and you have the means. You should really share um, that knowledge and that experience with other people, not by just telling people, I had the 65 Lafitte, I had the 50 whatever, I had the 82, but bring it out to people. And, and share it with them. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this video. Tell me what you think uh, of my opinions on things. 
I'm happy to kind of listen to other people's opinions. Um, and there, of course, there might be good reasons to have bigger sellers at home. But from my perspective, um, it, it doesn't need to be to, to be that large in terms of your, your, your seller size. Um, again, it's great if you have the means to have that. But I always question what you're going to do with a, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 bottle seller. Um, you, you know, unless you can, you really think you can drink it all. It's, it's, there has to be an end strategy um, and that has to be well thought out. Until next time, happy drinking.